This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here on the Twitter in the uh, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. We have a really great conversation here in studio. But first, please go check out the show and subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. And of course, subscribe to that uh, Facebook page. You can see some live facebook uh like we're doing today uh, every once in a while when we can get a uh, uh, uh somebody in studio or online for an interview or of course 10 p.m eastern time for the main wrestling mayhem show that we have every week over there and also please support the show patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show a lot of great stuff going on over there with the mayhem mania stuff including patreon in the bank and uh go look at wrestling show.com and the articles for mayhem mania to find out more information about that and now we i always love when we can get somebody in studio here i think we have a uh, uh, great conversations when that happens and somebody just happened to be f- coming through town so we got to get them here in studio thank you so much for joining us gary michael capetta for joining us here how you doing well i was coming from chicago i had my uh, beyond body slam chicago show mm-hmm. on sunday mm-hmm. and i stayed an extra day in, in i love chicago and I'm on my way home to New Jersey, and I was coming through the neighborhood. So I thought, well, I'd stop. So we, we, we brought you to the most complicated neighborhood ever. So thank you so much for dealing with our streets. No problem. <laughs> it's like San Francisco. It, it is. It is. But add snow. But no, I can't. I can't picture it. <laughs> Couldn't picture it. Like you were literally stuck on a hill because you can't go up or down, and the train three blocks away gets iced over. It's 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 amazing. Unless you can call in sick, you know, at work, and that's you know, I mean, that would be a good reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would be. It would right? be. If it's wouldn't... an acceptable reason in Pittsburgh. That might not be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in bed all day. Yeah, I wish. I wish these days. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, but no, thank you again for, for joining us here in studio and taking the time out of your trip uh, uh, to do this. And uh, hopefully we're a nice rest stop for you at the very least. So, <laughs> Well, I love Pittsburgh. That's why I'm bringing my show to Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. I love Pittsburgh. Right, well, let's talk about that first. You, you have um, the, you know, your, your, your show coming up. You know, tell us, what is the concept around what, what you're doing here? We are going to celebrate being wrestling fans. That sounds like this show's... Complete goal. I love now, it. Now, notice I didn't say wrestling fans. I said wrestling fans. <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to want to know how everybody who attends the show found their way to pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to share my way. And we're, we're, it's going to be a big celebration. And I have a bunch of stories to tell. I have giant screen video of rare footage, backstage NWA stuff, and... Uh, um, like I have my greatest hits, mm-hmm. for instance, the night Mick Foley lost his ear in Munich, Germany. Um, that was a non-televised event, but I do have video footage, and we'll take a look at how it happened and what led up to it, and what happened after they flipped me the ear and I brought it backstage to Ric Flair. Oh. <laughs> so we have a whole lot of insider stuff going on there too, um, and the whole show ends with a Q and A. Mm-hmm. It lasts two two and a half hours mm-hmm. with a ten minute intermission, and. I just take you from the WWF to uh, a little bit AWA, NWA, WCW, Ring of Honor, Indies. Absolutely. I, I, was, I was just looking up everything and, and realizing how much of wrestling industry, industry you've touched over the years, including McFoley's severed ear, apparently. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's really great. And actually, one of the first questions we usually ask on this show is, like, kind of what is, you know, not really how you got into wrestling, but what's your first, like, memory of wrestling? My first memory of wrestling was... Uh, finding it on television and thinking this is something I should not be watching as a sixth grader. <laughs> I thought it was like pornographic. Really? Uh huh. And it was it just like now? Why would you be surprised about that? Here's a, an eleven year old. Yeah. I just come across the show. Yeah. And there are these two scantily clad, sweaty men rolling around with each other <laughs> in the middle of a darkened arena, and people are shouting at them. Yeah. That sounds that sounds seedy to me. Yeah. Yeah, and plus, well. <laughs> and plus, you know, back then they were like like dark arenas at the time, right? Black and white television. Yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't. It, it's not the 
showy presentation that we have today. Oh, right. No yeah. glitz. No yeah. glamour. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is this is like the the grapple. In fact, yeah. I have 1966 footage that I do show at my stage show. So mm-hmm. you can see exact with the commentator who was Ray Morgan. This was uh, WWWF sitting there with a cigarette in his right hand. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how... That's how many generations ago we're talking about. Was it also sponsored by a cigarette company or a liquor company at the time? I, I don't know. <laughs> if, if I'm thinking the right era. Yeah, 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 yeah. That wasn't represented, not on the air at least. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, you'll get into your show, but kind of generally, like what, like, you know, was it when you saw something like that? Was was wrestling just something like, I, 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 I feel like that's something I should be involved in? It's a, it was a curiosity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just thought these folks were out of their mind. Mm-hmm. When I got to know them, I knew they were out of their mind. <laughs> little, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that's not true. That's that's, that's just a joke. But um, yeah, so as a, as a, as an eleven year old, mm-hmm. it's something like I don't know what this is, but I need to keep watching because I don't think I want to miss the next crazy thing these people do. Mm-hmm. I think that was the idea. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so going from there, I do have a couple of questions that uh, are by Tragar. He's always great to uh, submit questions to help us out along with the show. Um, and uh, he, he, well, first off, where's Tragar from? Tragar, Tragar is from locally here in, in the Pittsburgh area. And nice. I, I'm, I'm poking him, and uh, I believe he is a, a go on the Facebook to come into the show. So I'm hoping to see him there as well. Excellent. Uh, so, um, from what he has. Uh, so of all the wrestlers, uh, uh, living or dead, past or present, what's, what's one dream match that you maybe didn't get a chance to announce that you wish you would have been out, out there for? Don't have an answer for that. Yeah. Um, to tell you the truth, I, I have highlights of, uh, matches that I, here's, here's something you need to understand about me. I'm a very here and now kind of guy. Yeah. And yeah. I don't have regrets and I don't wish something happened that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And even if in the past when I've made my mistakes, um, I had a reason for going down the path that I went, even if it was the wrong path. But as I sit here today and I look back and I say, but I know why I made that decision. Mm-hmm. So like I'm a here and now kind of guy and I don't, I don't wish that something happened that didn't happen. Right. I feel blessed that I was able to do what I was um asked to do over the 40 years absolutely and in that time as you'll talk about at your show i mean you really they say you got to be involved with with a lot of the greats in the business and the great moments yeah i I was just very fortunate Mm -hmm. definitely even though it was funny because when i was i was looking up things i saw that you said uh uh it seemed like you 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 went away right before like the businesses blew up here and there right before what i said what i actually said you're being kind (laughs) what i actually said is is that if you want your business to go through the roof, hire Gary Michael Capetta, keep him around a little while, then fire him, mm-hmm. boom, and then your your business will explode. Do you provide this as a service for some indie wrestling promotions out there? Because I think that, hey. that that's a business proposition right there, right? Facebook, you know, GMC for real. Come message me. There you go. I mean, and you're the I see you've been doing a bit, uh, you know, around indies. Of course, you're involved, with, you know, uh, cross promoting this with the uh, International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, here in the Pittsburgh area, I mean, are you are you so you're getting out a bit and seeing like what's going on on the Indies these days? Yeah, you know, when I was um, with WCW full time, mm-hmm. and you're traveling and you're on the road twenty nights a month, you don't know what's going on. Not only in Indies, I didn't know what was going on in the WWE. I was just focused on what I did when I was home. I didn't have a whole lot of time to accomplish the things that um, that had been neglected because I was on the road. So when I came off the road, I had heard, now this was uh, early 2000s, I had heard about this indie group called Ring of Honor, which was in Philadelphia at the time, Mm -hmm. not too far from where I lived, and I took a ride in and I I saw the product. And um, that was my first introduction to the indie wrestling as we more or less know it today. It was, it was the, in its infancy, but it had incredible athletes. And, and it's really um, the thing, I think, when we think indie wrestling today, like it, I think it kind of informed a lot of the companies that we see today. You know, much like maybe in the 80s, everybody wanted to be ECW, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, really today, I think everybody wants to be some form of what they remember Ring of Honor, you know, in the heyday, I yes, guess. Yes, yes. And I had, you know, I had heard a lot of 
different stories about what different promotions were doing. Um, what really impressed me, my first Ring of Honor experience, was the level of athleticism of the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not an old guy who says, oh, everything in the past was so much better. No, not at all. And it's not like you didn't see good athletic wrestling because you were the era of Sting and Ricky Steamboat. I mean, that was yeah, I mean, it was be, uh, amazing stuff. I'll bring you way back, Don Leo Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, he was a Canadian giant who could who could fly through the air like you can't you couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. um, now I did see some flippity floppity things that I thought, eh, you know, maybe we need to channel that and you know understand better about what we're doing and what the purpose of being in a ring is. Yeah. But overall, I was so impressed that um, I gave Gabe Sapolsky, who was uh, the booker for Ring of Honor, a call. I congratulated him on, you know, on, on what he had put together. And, um, and I said, I, I want to help in any way that I can help. It doesn't have to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing I will not do, and that is I will not be a ring announcer. Mm -hmm. I had done that. But any way that I could give back, and, and and you know that started this phase that I'm still in in my career, which is um, supporting indie wrestling mm -hmm. and and the training centers, and because I believe that anyone who truly loves pro wrestling should care about the future of pro wrestling, and the health of the future of pro wrestling is dependent upon the young men and women that are training. And, and learning now uh, do you and trey's ask it actually asked along the side of an indie wrestling you know do you feel like the casual fans kind of overlook it too often or is it just not accessible to them these days um i you know i, I don't know how it could not be accessible it's, right. it's more neighborhood and yeah it's me in my mind my way of thinking it's more accessible because it's more affordable mm -hmm. and it's more neighborhood local mm -hmm. um i think sometimes they don't know that it's there I think sometimes they've been brainwashed that if it's not WWE or TNA, it's really not any good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that the perception is uh, misinformed. I think that's, I think I've seen all that. Um, I've been here in Pittsburgh and we have four promotions and people are like, there's wrestling here. I'm like, Oh man, is there wrestling here? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, this is a, this is a wrestling town and I think there will always be some kind of thriving wrestling here. Yeah. Right? And other than online, it's very difficult to get the word out mm -hmm. because there's not a whole lot of cooperation with the local media. Mm -hmm. So unless you're willing to invest a bucket of money in local advertising or, or happen to have contacts at the radio station or, right. or at, the, at the stations that that will do it. Right. And, yeah. or if there happens to be a, a jock who's a wrestling fan or, you know, it just has to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it is difficult to get the word out. And I'm uh, a group like, um, IWC that's so successful my hats off to them because I know it's I know it's difficult and when you get the people there you've got to give them a reason to come back mm -hmm. and obviously the local promotion here you know IWC has done that mm -hmm. so hats off to them um, keep up the good work in the now and the present is there anything you know I know you're not you know you know as busy as you are not on top you know maybe watching everything every minute or anything like that is there anything new that you've seen come out any indies any any particular wrestler that has stuck out to you that people should maybe keep an eye on or, or at least has has your attention i guess um it's it, like you said it's i'm all over the place so yeah, i yeah. don't really i'm not able to watch anything consistently mm -hmm. so that makes it difficult mm -hmm. so i would never put my endorsement on anything unless i or anyone and any talent unless i had seen um them consistently saw some growth so when I, I do dip in and out of a lot of the different products, mm -hmm. a couple of them I don't even receive where I live. So mm -hmm. like Ring of Honor, I can't watch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, online, it, I suppose I can, but. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I know they're, they're kind of more the old TV market model and, and their, their live show now, now kind of goes along with that. Mm -hmm. they, they go to wherever they, they can get their markets. Yeah. Like Lucha Underground. Mm -hmm. I don't receive that on my, mm -hmm. they're just broadcast TV. I'm talking. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, from that, I mean, you know, you talked about a little bit, of, you know, the differences in, in, in Ring of Honor and everything like that. Um, do you prefer like things that kind of harken back to to what you've seen over the years, like what, um, um, uh, how uh, you know wrestlers that that kind of are down to the basics? There were all kinds of wrestlers 
way back then. Mm -hmm. No, I, it, it's not. It's not that I I tend to go towards a certain era. Mm -hmm. I go towards good wrestling. Yeah, wrestling that grabs your heart and makes you spill your guts. Um, I I think people, wrestling fans, some wrestling fans, think too much. I think they definitely know too much. <laughs> Only and I only say that because I think it, it it impedes their raw enjoyment of it. I think it's enjoyment on a different level, mm -hmm. and uh, which never existed before. So I'm not putting it down, but um, but I think that from my experience, when you respond to what you see, not just in wrestling, but in a movie, in a TV show, in a concert just viscerally you know it, it grabs you you're not thinking about what is grabbing you you're just crying you're laughing you're angry and it just comes just comes out of you mm -hmm. that's to me that's a, a performer is very successful when they can elicit that from their audience so it, it's a it's a bigger challenge now because um yeah the wrestler really needs to move beyond that preconceived oh i know this is going to happen yeah that was a great match but we know they're going to get beat at the pay-per-view you know those kinds of talks like that right? definitely is more mm -hmm. difficult now not only for the reason that wrestling fans are smarter but also because wrestlers are very exposed most of them choose to be exposed on um, on uh, online, mm -hmm. so that makes it difficult because um, if you're portraying a certain character that's a dastardly kind of villain, and then I'm looking at you online playing with your little daughter, you see, I I wouldn't do it if I was that wrestler. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I would be truer to my character. There was certainly one. I was they have a ride along show on WB Network. They they just showed the one last night of. Uh, uh, Sammy Zayn and Neville and Neville has been like beating everybody up and has been this angry guy and they're just like palling around in the car which is I think cool to see the back you know I like seeing the background of that right, right. But, I, but I'm sitting there thinking like these but you know like a little bit of like but he's supposed to be the bad guy just like you know maybe if you you know back in the kayfabe days when you saw them palling around when they're supposed to be you know I don't know Hulk Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter in WrestleMania 7 or something yeah. right you know but there, there's still like that internal like yeah, but you know, there's nothing kind of perception, right? I just think it's 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 makes it more difficult oh, for him to um, to do his job well. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. just do, and I don't know why you would actively participate in something that would make your job more difficult. Yeah. Now, in yeah. this case, he may have been told by WWE, "This is what you're doing." <laughs> but I'm talking like indie wrestlers. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't I don't know why you would do that, and there are. There's not a right answer and a wrong answer to this. Mm -hmm. um, I go around uh, the country and do seminars. I talk about the business of pro wrestling. And um, how you present your, yourself online is a topic that comes up. And some of the trainers tell the guys to go out and you just be yourself. Some of the guys are more of my way of thinking. And honestly, I can't tell you that one is absolutely correct or not. But I can tell you that you are making, unless you're, Unless you're a baby face and you love everyone and everyone loves you, well, then that's the perfect <laughs> place for you to be online. Exactly. And it depends on what kind of heel you are, too. Be, even, even if you go to an indie show and you have the guys out there and they're signing an intermission, um, it depends on, on what your character is. If you're a cocky heel and uh, someone comes up and, and asks for your autograph, you know, the, the comic that I would give would be, oh, yeah, I knew you couldn't resist. Come on, I'll, I'll sign it for you. There, there's, there's one, uh, actually, even the, the show we just filmed uh, uh, a couple weekends ago where the guy, the bad guys are out there on the mic and the one guy's like in their face, ringside, booing him. And he just looks at him and like, you bought my shirt last show. <laughs> Shut up. You know, but again, it's you know, a little bit of play to part, but they're having fun with it, right? Yes. So, Yes. I guess where it really doesn't work is if you're like an out-of-this-world monster. Right. Now, I don't know if there are many of those out there in the NDC, to tell you the truth, but because it seems like when I watch WWE, it seems like they're going along with reality TV. Yes. And when you do that, nobody is so far out of the box. And it makes it, I think, every more, more of the participants like each other. Mm -hmm. I think it makes it less interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, or at least like they have to 
turn up that part of them that they need to like you know stone cold's a classic example right like it's his personality up to 11 right and maybe it feels like a lot of the personalities are maybe turned up to eight at this point and it kind of blends together right and you always had regular guys yeah but they were contrasted with out uh, otherworldly characters mm-hmm. you know there was there were all different kinds of um of of personas that were wrestling so but now i just see i don't know if i see another long dark haired wet with a beard and a tattoo you know to me that i get confused as to who's who why is their hair so wet all the time (laughs) it's the question we ask but yeah yeah no that's not my question my question is why are so many of them that way yeah why are the cookie cutter almost Mm mm-hmm I would want, if I was the promoter, if I was the owner, I would want a variety. Absolutely. A variety of looks. And it felt like, um, and it feels like it goes through phases, because it feels like some years it's like everybody, like uh, there was a the NXT program, I think it was, that they did back in the day, like when it was like a contest on TV. It felt like every guy that came out of there had exactly the same body, like the you know, jacked kind of, kind of guy that could wrestle. But, and now it's turned into like the, not the flippy, really the Ring of Honor, like athletic kind right. of idea and from, I, from I, i'm not years sure ago. of you of the intent of what you just said but let me just say mm-hmm. that it doesn't just happen right i mean there is somebody controlling who gets spots right and what the look of the promotion is right so right. it's not just oh it's it's the trend it's a booker it's a, an owner that's making the decision mm-hmm. that all of you guys that look the same are going to be my top guys, or or that's the, and or, I don't understand why they make that decision. Or that's the preference. We like to see these kinds of guys in this position because of X, right? You know, well, it's yeah. okay to have a couple of them. Yeah, but absolutely. When so many of them look alike. It's like they're all then coming. nobody stands out. It's like they're all coming out of a factory sometimes. So, but yeah, absolutely. But it's a decision that's being made. Yeah, yeah. Um. So you know, uh, what is kind of the uh, you know best and worst thing going on the road we like we all talk indie wrestling on here but what, what's, what's the doing the, the show like you're doing here you're you're well into this tour um is this the first tour like this that you've done yes okay so well i had my book tour i uh, did i yes. did several book tours mm-hmm. but as far as performing on stage mm-hmm. this is the first stage show tour and, and and you're no stranger to performing in front of people i mean in your right. position over the years um, was there a, uh, do you have any reservations going to doing it this way and being the sole kind of no, subject of this? Not at all. Yeah. Um, well, people know me in a certain way mm-hmm. and, uh, they know me as saying a way to place in a name and a wait in a place in a name. And next week you're going to see an await in a place in a name. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm still the same Gary Malcolm Capetta, but I'm showing different sides of, of myself. Um, and I think people will be happy. Well, the show has gotten really good reviews and it's gotten good reaction. Um, people just say they have a lot of fun coming mm-hmm. to the show. Now, who would ever think that you would have fun going to a Gary Michael Capetta show? Like that's like because he's that serious, conservative looking guy that didn't smile so much on camera. Mm-hmm. But there are other sides to me that now in my uh, my older years are. I'm I'm sharing. You know, I, I, there, there's been a couple of announcers that have come like after they've left like a WWE or whatever. Uh, uh, start to get on, I, I start to hear on the podcast and everything. I was like, those are some of the most interesting people out there, you know. Um, but you guys just had well, nobody ever asked us any questions, you know, for 30 years. No one cared. <laughs> so all of a sudden, if you care, I'll tell you what I think. It's kind of like and 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 you know, rest in peace, George Steele. But he was at uh, another legends here in the area, and I got the film a a q a that he did and everybody's like like oh everybody's surprised i talked they didn't let me talk for so many years and now they can't shut me up right yes yes. (laughs) exactly (laughs) you know and it's same thing there right so um uh, but but yeah so really what's the best and the worst thing about you know the tour so far um well the best thing are is interacting with the people Mm -hmm. um because uh there i have a set that i do um it's, it's it lasts about most nights it lasts about two hours um and i know exactly what i'm going to be addressing because remember i have the giant video so i'm coordinating my presentation with what i'm showing you mm-hmm. but how i get there is a surprise to me uh for instance in chicago 
there was a fella in the audience. He just caught my eye and I just started ripping on him. And because of what he was doing, it was just kind of bizarre to me. He had, he had stacks of, of uh, index cards and he was taking notes. So I said to him, are you like from the IRS? <laughs> are you a Vince McMahon stooge? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> So I couldn't plan that I was, you know, going to find that fella there and doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So you, I don't, you well, know, I just go with the flow of what feels right. What was he doing? I think he was a, uh, an up and coming ring announcer and he was taking notes. Oh, okay. I think that's what he was doing. Which, okay, sure. See, because I do come in the audience. I do ask questions. Mm -hmm. It is interactive. You know, there are a couple times during the show mm -hmm. when I do come out and, and talk to people and want to know. Um, you know, what they think about certain, uh, I don't want to tell you now because I want to, I want to surprise the audience when they get there. So, <laughs> I, you know, but I do it, do interactive stuff. Nobody gets embarrassed. Mm -hmm. The guy was very cool. Yeah. He, you know, he left. It's all fun. Yeah. It's all good. It's all yeah. fun. That's good. That's awesome. Uh, so please go check it out. Of course, if you are uh, listening to this before the March 18th date here in the Pittsburgh area, this is a DVD taping, right? Yes. So, um, and I guess, uh, do you have any prospects? Let me put it this way. They'll be taping there. I'm not sure if, if this particular performance will wind up on the DVD. Okay. I'm doing it at various locations. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Uh, so, uh, again, you could, I don't know, maybe if you get his attention, <laughs> if you part of the DVD, uh, not specifically try to, but you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, on Sunday, the, uh. The 12th of March, I'll be in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be coming back here to Pittsburgh on uh, Saturday the 18th at Steel City Improv. And that's right over on Ellsworth Avenue. That, that's right in the heart of, of Pittsburgh. We're not telling you it's Pittsburgh like a lot of these indie shows and it's like 45 minutes away. It, it's, it's in Pittsburgh, in, in guys. In Pittsburgh. Don't worry. You can take an Uber, whatever you need to do. Just have fun. And then in the <laughs> afternoon on Saturday the 25th, I'll be in Baltimore. Um, and that's North Charles Street. So that's right in the heart of Baltimore. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. Go check it out. I'll be there. Uh, hopefully some other Mayhemers as well. Hopefully we see you, you guys there. And of course, uh, our friends with the uh, International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, where can they find more information about the shows coming up? They can find uh, the best place is probably my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, so it's Facebook.com slash my initials GMC number four real GMC for real um, tickets uh, for Baltimore and for Pittsburgh are at eventbrite.com. There you go. And the links for those events. Just go to the event page on my Facebook um, presence and and you can zip to the Greensboro tickets and the Baltimore tickets and the Pittsburgh tickets. There you go. And, you know, all of these theaters are like, they're very intimate. They're small. 100-seater, 90-seater. Yeah, I was looking at the numbers on the Eventbrite page, so you know exactly how many are left <laughs> if you get on there yep. uh, for the VIP, for the regular seating and everything yep. like, like that. So don't sleep on it. Uh, so yeah, and, and they're, 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 if, if available, there will uh, as as the sign says on here, there'll be there'll be uh, tickets. At you the know, door, that's a but, concern of mine because yeah. as a wrestling fan, you never if you go to an indie show, you're never turned away. Yeah. you can always put another row of seats up, but at a theater, there you can't the do that. The exact same thing. So we talked to a poster behind you, uh, elaborate entrance of Chad Deity as I'm cheating off the poster behind you. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can go there because it was like it was a wrestling ring theater kind of presentation. I'm like, oh, I, I'm sure I can walk up and get tickets. No, completely sold out, completely missed it. Felt horrible because we actually talked to the guy. Yeah. You know, I, and it was just like. Well, not only are, you know, are the, um, the seats stationary, but they yeah. also have fire laws. Oh, yeah. So you can only put so much in that. This isn't a gymnasium that we can break. <laughs> we can skirt it a little bit, right? Right. So, uh, so, so again. So do not. Plus. Please. Why would you wait till the night of and pay a little more? You mm -hmm. might as well get them at eventbrite.com and save a few bucks. Absolutely. Get your tickets. Check it out. Thank you so much for stopping in once again. Uh, please follow and please come to these shows. Uh, check it out or uh, keep an eye out for that eventual DVD release, of course, as well. Uh, if you're not in the areas and a lot of great stuff on there. Um, but having fun, fun with your Twitter account lately, uh, going through all the stuff you've been posting yeah. uh, on there, too. So, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of Twitter, to tell mm -hmm. you the truth. I don't understand the concept. Why am I handcuffed to was it 140 characters? What what is the purpose of that? I have a conversation with you after the show. Okay. I could I could go a half an hour. This is like that's my business, man. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm a Facebook guy because I have I have more to say and uh, oh absolutely. And what happens is when I paste on post on Facebook, it automatically goes on my Twitter. Of course, 
of course. Hey, that's why you make sure you got your foot in both doors, right? There you go. So go check them out. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, please check out the wrestling interviews. We have over 150 interviews for Indie Mayhem Show or WrestlingMayhemShow.com and some older interviews that probably aren't as great because I am not a great, did not start as a great interviewer. Still probably questionable. Uh, but uh, please go check out all of them at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show on the iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the video versions over on Facebook and YouTube for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, of course, please support the show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. And support our friends over at IndieWrestling.us, including the International Wrestling Cartel and uh, the sh- all the shows past and future and present uh, coming up here uh, in digital download and DVD format. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys next time, and please support Indie Wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.